Welcome back to Midco Sports tonight. It's time for Saturday Storylines. Always a fun, a good time on the show. But everyone's extra cheery today because our teams went 4-0 on the weekend. So to chat a little bit more about that, we're bringing in our FCS panel. And we'll start in North Dakota with Brian Sean. So Bishan, a 52 to nothing absolute roll of Indiana State. Not much to say about the game, but NDSU currently has 11 interceptions on the year, second in the FCS. So what's kind of been the key to their great defense? Well, I think the key is really just their safeties are playing so excellent right now. And you look at guys like Robbie Grimsley, Trey Dempsey, they have both been playing so many snaps. Both have been you know, in that position so many times that they know how to read quarterback's eyes and break on the ball. And then you take a guy like James Hendrick, who's actually leading the team with four interceptions this season. He was playing quarterback at this point last year. So for him to come over in the spring and make an immediate impact in the secondary, the safeties are responsible for 10 of those interceptions. So that's a big reason why North Dakota State is having so much success this season in turning the football over. Those guys are in the right spot at the right time. And most importantly, they're making the plays and holding onto the football. And that's why North Dakota State right now continues to really turn teams over and put their offenses on short fields, which is widening that gap for the offense. Yeah, very tough Bison defense. We'll have a good game this week against Youngstown State. Looking forward to that. But let's move to South Dakota State. They're going game over the weekend. They bounced back big, Tom, after the loss to Youngstown State yes. the week prior. A 49-14 win. Was this a total turnaround, you know, against the Southern Illinois team? To totally, yes. Totally. It just it was everything. Um, the effort was there. It was just a much better effort and more purpose for the Jackrabbits. And you kind of forget at this level that there still has to be that effort every week. And the Jacks really brought it in this game. Taron Christian was great. He hit a couple of young receivers. Marquise Lewis with his first two touchdown catches as a Jackrabbit. So the offense got rolling as well. Christian. Uh, 12 touchdowns and two interceptions now in five games. That is Skylar Cavanaugh, their true freshman tight end. So they got everybody involved offensively. We see all the passing touchdowns here, but the running game was really good for the Jacks. Brady Mangarelli with 220 yards, a career high for him as they go for 368 yards rushing. That's twice as many as any other team against Southern Illinois so far this year. And that includes Memphis, who actually beat UCLA. Memphis is a really good team, so you start looking around and comparing things that way. The running game was really good. The defense was fabulous this week, and it was just really came down to effort, I think, and the Jackrabbits got it done. Impressive win. Seems like they're back on track, so that's for good now, to see yeah. for yeah. now. Yeah. All right, moving on to our final game, Jay, the giant USD Dakota Days battle. USD and Youngstown State. Came down to a field goal. Ryan Weiss drills the game winner with seven seconds left. I mean, you talked to Bob Nielsen about it. Mm -hmm. Was he confident in his kicker? Well, he said he was. And, and you know, I, I, I'm not so sure that outside the program that that necessarily would have been the feeling. And that's not necessarily a knock on Ryan Weiss, but it's just the one thing that coming into this season that the Coyotes were the most unsure about. They, they weren't. Uh, seeing a lot of consistency at that position. They were trying to fill a void created by one of the best to ever do it, if not the best to ever do it at South Dakota and Miles Bergner. And Ryan's had his ups and downs here early in the season. Just two for four on field goals coming in. Uh, his long was 23 and he'd missed from 30 and 27. Hadn't even attempted a kick from 30 yards or beyond. So this 29 yarder was still in that range, but it was by far and away the most pressure he had seen uh, on a field goal kick in his career and certainly in his time at USD. So uh, good to see him step up and, and drill the kick in, in, a, in a really tough spot and lift the Coyotes to a victory on Saturday. Is that ice water in the vein? I yeah, was wondering what that was. In the ice water. I was trying to figure yeah. that. All right, well, thanks, guys. Great discussion today. Right. When we come back, we toss it up to Grand Forks with Alex Heiner to show you all the UND hockey highlights from the weekend in Alaska. And after that, a sit-down with North Dakota hockey head coach Brad Berry. Stay right here.